Hi, I'm Kyleen. And I'm Jonathan, and we are the Provident Preppers. Clean, safe drinking water is a critical resource. Drinking contaminated water can result in illness and death. Do you know how to make water safe to drink? Most of us are incredibly spoiled. We have plenty of fresh water at the turn of a tap. But what happens if that water is somehow taken from us? In this video, we will talk about seven disinfection techniques that you can use to ensure that your family has a fresh, clean supply of water. Have you ever been really, really thirsty? I think we all understand how important water is. And today we're talking about making water safe to drink. Very important information. This is based on the post that we did a few weeks ago, Making Water Safe to Drink, Seven Disinfection Techniques. We strongly encourage you to look at that. It's got a wealth of information. Let's start by talking about what exactly are the bad things that are lurking in your water that could make you sick. The first are viruses. Viruses are very, very tiny, and because of that, they don't filter out easily. You have to have special filters to be able to accomplish that. Bacteria is a little bit larger and it can be filtered out by almost any decent filter. And then you have protozoas, which are very large and they are easily filtered out. The problem with protozoas is some chemicals such as chlorine will not deactivate them. And so you have to a lot of times use two treatment methods in order to be able to take care of the protozoa. Another thing that's lurking in your water are the chemical contaminants. This video is all about disinfection techniques. If you disinfect something, what you're doing is you're killing the live critters that are in the water that can make you sick. Disinfection will not remove the chemical contaminants, which may be oils or salts or pesticides or all kinds of different things that may have been introduced to your water and contaminated it. Make sure that you understand you must disinfect to kill the bugs, but Filtration may be required to remove the chemical contaminants. Your best bet is to store drinking water because anything that you store in the barrels in your home or in containers in your home is going to be safer to drink than something that you might find out in the open during a, a disaster. Check out how to store water for emergency preparedness and we go into great detail how to store your water. Let's talk just a moment about best practices. The first thing we want to do is to clarify the water. That's step one. That gets all the big stuff out of it so that the disinfection can do its job. If there are particles in there, they sometimes mask and don't allow the chemicals to do their job in disinfection. That's right. So little bio bugs can hide in tiny pieces of leaves or little particles that you may have, they could hide there and avoid deactivation. So it's really important that you do some kind of initial filtering, whether it's through a handkerchief or a coffee filter or a paper towel or anything that will remove the chunks and the floaties. Step two is disinfection. And we're gonna talk about that as we move on a little more. Let's move on to step three, which is filtration. And we'll also talk a little more about that. The most effective way to disinfect your water is by boiling. The water must achieve 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. A lot of times you'll hear people say they don't know how long they're supposed to boil their water in order for disinfection to occur. And the reason why is because it has to reach this temperature. So depending on your elevation, the water will boil at different temperatures. That is why you might need to boil it a little bit longer if your elevation is higher. Pasteurization is one of my favorites. This requires a lot less energy. You can see here, we are pasteurizing water in a sun oven. And you can see in the bottle on the right, you can see the WAPI that's in there. That's a pasteurization indicator, water pasteurization indicator. That is a glass tube that's got wax in it. And when that reaches 150 degrees for six minutes, that wax will drop to the bottom, indicating that that water has been pasteurized. Pasteurization will clean up your water and get rid of all the uh, microbes that might cause you illness or problems. 
Distillation is another great method of disinfecting your water. Obviously, it's bringing that to a temperature that will allow it to create steam. That steam then recondenses back into clean water. The downside of distillation is that it's very energy intensive. And at a time when you may not have a lot of energy resources, that may not be your best option. If you have the ability to distill your water, it will also remove a lot of the chemical contaminants in the process. So it won't remove anything that has a lower boiling point than water, such as oil or alcohol, things like that. But many of them it will remove so you'll have a cleaner water. If you look at this, this is just a makeshift distiller that we created. It's on the stovetop and what we did is we inverted the glass lid. We attached a small plastic container using a twisty tie to the handle of the lid so the steam goes up to the top and then it recondenses back into the plastic dish. And there are commercial versions out there that are both electrical, there are solar ones, there's plants online. So not a bad option if, you, uh, if you're interested in distillation. Just very fuel intensive. Chlorination is one of the disinfection techniques that is most commonly used. Most cities use chlorination for their water. Chlorination does a great job, but it will not kill uh, some of the protozoas, and that is the downside of it. The upside of it is most of those protozoas are large enough that they do get filtered out. So chlorination is definitely a, a technique, and we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. The Clorox company sent us these amounts. Be careful when you're using chlorine bleach to disinfect. It's called sodium hypochlorite, that's the active ingredient. But a lot of the bleaches that you have out there have thickeners and scents and all kinds of things in it that are very dangerous to add to your water. And also they'll reduce the active amount of the chlorine in it, so you need more of that chlorine in order to do the, the job of disinfection. So on this table it shows there are only three types of Clorox that the Clorox company recommends for water disinfection. The first one is the regular bleach and the amounts you need to use are right there. The second is Clorox germicidal bleach with Chlormax, and the third is concentrated Clorox germicidal bleach. And you notice there are different amounts that you need to use depending on which one you choose to use. When you're using chlorine, make sure that you put the drops in and you allow 30 minutes of contact time because it has to have time to kill those bugs before you consume it. After that period of time, you want to smell it. There should still be a slight chlorine smell. If there's not, go ahead and treat it again and then wait 15 minutes before consuming. That's right. That residual is critically important because if you do not have residual, that means all that chlorine was used and it may not have completely disinfected your water. One other important thing to remember is that when you buy your bleach from the store, you only have about six months where it has the strength to disinfect water. So if that bottle of bleach has been on the shelf for a year, it no longer is strong enough to disinfect your water. So make sure that if you are using that for disinfection purposes that you always have fresh bleach. Calcium hypochlorite is by far my favorite way to disinfect the water. And the reason why is because you can purchase the dry calcium hypochlorite in these one pound bags. That one pound bag that you see will disinfect 10,000 gallons of water. That bag has a shelf life of about 10 years. If you Google the Provident Prepper disinfecting water using calcium hypochlorite, you will see how I put it actually in a glass bottle for long-term storage. And there's a label and everything and directions for you. So you really should visit that to see the best way to use it. Iodization is another disinfection technique. The picture you see on the left is iodine crystals, such as would be in the Polar Pure that you see in the bottle in the center picture. You can see the picture on the right, we're creating a stock solution to use for disinfection. And then in the center picture, we're adding that stock solution to the water to accomplish the disinfection. The amount of stock solution that you need depends on the temperature of the water. You will need to know your water temperature so that you ensure adequate disinfection. So you need to have contact time just like you did with the chlorine, right? You can't just drink this right away. You've got to make sure that you let that battle with the bugs happen so that you've got disinfected water. The other thing we might mention is that you can buy iodine tablets. Make sure that you use those tablets within the shelf life 
to ensure that adequate disinfection will occur and that they are still the strength that you need them to be. That's a really great point. Uh, we might also point out the Polar Pure has an almost indefinite shelf life and that is one of the advantages of the Polar Pure is it, it has a very, very long life. Solar disinfection is totally amazing. If you want to get a lot more information on this, Google the Provident Prepper, UV rays save the day, disinfecting water with the sun. When I first heard about this, I thought it was one of the scams that was out there or one of the <laughs> nonsense too. things. But we've done an amazing amount of research, and this is how many of the third world countries get their drinking water. It is through solar radiation that this happens. So the way that you accomplish this, you need a clear bottle. It could be a glass canning jar. It can be a two liter bottle. It cannot be any larger than four inches in diameter. You're going to fill that bottle partway full, shake it up to oxygenate it because oxygen will increase the rate of disinfection. And then you'll finish filling it all the way up and lay it on its side and expose it to the sun for four to six hours. It will kill all of the bad bugs. It will not remove any chemicals. Remember, disinfection doesn't remove the bad chemicals. You've got to do something else with that. But this sample that we have here was actually taken from some really disgusting pond water and we used a bandana to filter out all the chunky parts and it's being exposed out there to the sun. And this is one of those tips that's really important to remember because if you have nothing but a water bottle and sunshine, you can disinfect your water and make it safe to drink. Very important to remember for an emergency. In the event that you have some cloudy weather or intermittent cloudy weather, you may want to expose that bottle for a couple of days. However, if you're in the middle of a snowstorm, you're going to need to use a different form of disinfection because sunshine is really critical. If you put it on a dark surface, then you increase the heat, which will also facilitate the disinfection. So the combination of the UV rays, the oxygenation, and the heat really make it work very quickly. Many cities now are using UV disinfection to clean the water that you are drinking. Now this isn't done with the sun, but they have special bulbs that provide that UV radiation. And the nice thing about it is it does take care of the protozoas. And that is the advantage that the cities are seeing and, and why many cities use that now. Just remember four inches. If you put a gallon jug out there, you're not going to be able to accomplish the task. The largest container you can really use to disinfect water using solar disinfection is a two liter soda bottle. Filtration. We don't like any of the nasty chemicals in our water at all. So we disinfect first and then we run it through a filter. If you have a good filter, it will remove the chlorine or the iodine and the chemicals. If you have chemicals in your water, you've got to use a filter that will remove the chemicals and not all filters are rated the same. Not all of them are intended for the same purpose. Some of them will remove viruses and some of them won't. This is just a variety of different filters. You need to research and make sure that whatever filter you select will do what you intend it to do. Here are some additional resources that we hope you will take advantage of. Google the Provident Prepper, tips for storing water in a 55 gallon plastic barrel. Also, Google the Provident Prepper Emergency Water, 17 Potential Sources. These provide a lot of really good information and we hope that you will look at those and use them. We have provided you with seven great ways to disinfect your water. Now you have the knowledge you need to make your water clean in the event of emergency. One thing to remember is that disinfection will not remove the chemical contaminants. You need to have a way to filter your water that will remove those chemical contaminants to make it safe to drink should that be necessary. And now for the questions of the day. Have you ever had a time when you've had to disinfect water to make it safe to drink? And what have you learned in that process? Share below. And thanks for being part of the solution.